Okay. Hello, everyone. Let's go ahead and take a look at eight, section 8G, which is called the general binomial expansion. In the previous lesson, we looked at how to generate the expansion for any particular positive integer exponent of a binomial <laughs> raised to that exponent. And now what we want to what we want to do is we want to take that expansion and see if we can actually come up with a simple and elegant form to take care of all expansions for any positive integer n. So let's just take a look at what we had from the previous section. Again, notice that if we take a plus b raised to the 0, it's just 1. And if we take a plus b raised to the first power, what we come up with is 1a to the first b to the 0 plus 1a to the 0 b to the first. Now, why am I writing all of this? The reason why I'm writing all of this is because we want to find a pattern. And in order to find a pattern, it's going to be important for us to go ahead and include all of those bits of information that normally we wouldn't include, but in order to find a pattern, we probably should. So, even for a plus b raised to the second power, 1a squared b to the 0 plus 2a to the first b to the first plus 1a to the 0 b to the second, and so forth. Now, what we should know is that if we wanted to go all the way to say, for example, a plus b raised to the nth power, how am I going to go about generalizing what that expansion is going to look like? Well, let's take a look at some of the things that we know for sure. We know for a fact that the first and the last term of the expansion will have a coefficient of 1. Okay? Notice that's true for all of those because that's the way that the Pascal's triangle looked. That's the numbers of the this side and that side of Pascal's triangle. Now, if we went ahead and took a look at the values of a in the expansion, notice that it started off with a to the third, because this was the third part, a to the third, a to the second, a to the first, a to the zero. Now, if I go ahead and do that for n, what I know then is that this is going to be, the first term is going to have a to the n, second term is going to have a to the n minus one, the third term is going to have a to the n minus two, continue on until you get to the n minus 1th term, where this would be just a to the first, and then a to the zero. When it came to the b, the b values, uh, sorry, the b exponents for each of the terms, notice that it started off with zero and it went up one for each of the two consecutive terms that we had. And notice that it ended up with the same value as the exponent for the binomial. So in the same respect, I'm going to start off with b to the zero, b to the first, b to the second. I'm going to continue all the way until I know I get up to b to the n minus one, and the last term, of course, will be b to the n. So the important thing now <coughs> is that we actually find a way to determine what the coefficients are. Now, of course, if we had Pascal's triangle, then it'd be very nice. But what if this was, say, for example, 100? Does that mean that you're going to have to write a Pascal's triangle with 100 rows or 101 rows? I mean, that's absolutely ridiculous. So what we need to do is we need to find a way of determining what the coefficients are just by the fact that we know the value of n and the position of the term. Okay, and there is a way of doing it, and I'm hoping that when you look at the Mathematica demonstration from the previous section, you would have realized that there is in fact a way to represent all of the terms of all the rows, all the coefficients for all of the rows of Pascal's triangle using a very simple, simple method. And that method, of course, is the choose method. But let's go ahead and before we actually introduce the choose method, let's just make sure that this makes sense to everybody as well. Notice that if I take the a plus b raised to the n power, then what I have is I have a summation now because these are the sum of all those terms. And notice that if I let r be equal to zero, then this would be n minus 0, which is a to the n, b to the 0, which is, of course, that. If I let r be equal to 1, which is the second term, then this would be a to the n minus 1, b to the first, which is that. If I let r be equal to 2, then this is a to the n minus 2, b to the second, which is that. And continuing on, let's say, for example, I finally get all the way up to the last term, which is n. So that would be that a to the n minus z, n minus n, which in that case would be 0 and b to the n. So we know that we're coming out with all the terms. Now again, the only thing that we have to worry about is our choose. So this question mark here is going to be very easily determined 
by this. Okay? And the way that you describe that is N choose R. Okay, so there's a couple of other ways that you'll see this notation here. You'll also see it like this, and you'll also see it like this. Okay, either one of those three different ways are e either one of these three ways are different ways to note and choose R. Now, of course, how to go about calculating that? It's just a matter of looking that into uh, and putting that into your calculator appropriately, and you'll be able to actually come out with all the different values of the row of a particular of a particular row of Pascal's triangle. Which would then be, of course, the coefficients of our binomial expansion. So, there you go. This is how we actually can simply represent this entire expansion very elegantly, like this. Okay? Now, how do we go about using this and what is this used for? Well, the nice thing now is that if I want to actually find a particular value of a, per a, a particular term and the coefficient of that term, then I can now go ahead and just use this formula to pinpoint that particular term of the expansion. So let's take a look at an example here. Say, for example, we have the quantity 2x minus 3y uh, raised to the 8th power, and we wanted to say what is the coefficient of the x to the 5th, y to the 3rd term. Now, with the previous section, we would have to draw tri uh, Pascal's triangle to the ninth row, figure out what all of those numbers are, and then go about doing this pattern that we have here. But we can now do this very simply by using the fact that we know that this is what the general expansion will look like. So let's approach this problem uh, similar to the way that we did yesterday, uh, the previous section. We know for a fact that n is equal to 8 because that's the exponent there. Okay? Now, we're trying to look for the x to the fifth, y to the third term. Okay? So what that means then is let's go ahead and take a look. Let's say let a b equal to the 2x, and let's say that y, uh, sorry, b is equal to the negative 3y. So really then, what I'm looking for is I'm looking for the a to the fifth, b to the third term. Um, I'm looking for this term in that particular expansion there. And I need to find out where, what the actual very uh, coefficient will be in Pascal's triangle. So in order to do that, I need to establish what r is, because of course that is going to give us what the coefficient would be for that particular term in the expansion. And I already know what r is. Well, r is just going to be 3. So we know, therefore, that r is equal to 3. And now I can go about finding the particular x to the fifth, y to the third term for this expansion. So notice that I can just very easily take a look at n Right, using this right here, I got n is 8. I know that r is going to be equal to 3. Okay. And this is going to be a to the fifth, b to the third. Now, if I substitute that with x and y, this is going to be 8 choose 3. a, which is going to be 2x raised to the fifth power, and negative 3y raised to the third power. So notice that if I go ahead and find out what number this represents here, take this as well and multiply it out to come up with 2, what's that, 32x to the fifth, and this would be negative 27y to the third. If I multiply all of those numbers together, I'll be able to come up with the coefficient of the term with x to the fifth and y to the third for this particular expansion there. So, to wrap things up, we can now go ahead and determine particular coefficients of a particular term for a particular expansion, for any expansion actually, because of the fact that we know that every binomial expanded, the expansion of any binomial will have this form here. And so that's what's called the general binomial expansion. And let's see if everybody can use this general binomial expansion to determine some of the coefficients of particular terms for a particular binomial. Binomial is raised to power uh, positive exponents. Okay, give it a shot. Let's see how it goes. And I'll see you there.